Hi guys, at the beginning of this video, you're going to hear some rustling around. Uh, the mic was just a bit too close to me, so forgive me for that, but eventually it will go away. So if you can just be patient and just kind of ride through that with me, then we can move forward. All right, thanks. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Good morning. I hope y'all are doing well. I am thankful to those of you who are subscribers to my channel. Those of you that just listen, thank you for stopping by from time to time. I also invite you guys to check out my playlist. I have made playlists. I categorize some of these videos so that you can just go and check out certain things. So you can look, see what's there, and you can watch and um, or you can just watch my videos as they are uploaded thank you to everyone wherever you are in the world guys i just want to talk a little more about something that i think is so important you know i used to be a party girl i used to be someone i was hanging out a lot well i wasn't hanging out but i love to go to go out i mean that was my thing <laughs> And um, hanging out with my friends and just about what's the next thing, Where, what's going on, you know what I mean? Friday night, oh, I'm not home, I'm going out. And as I said in the past, you know, some people always want to go out with me, dates, stuff like that. Um, that was just my life. And fornication was not far from me you know I was definitely doing that I thought that was all right you know basically just knocked everything that the bible said about it, it was like uh no you know but you know the devil make you feel like you're a little different because oh I'm not sleeping around with a bunch of people I'm committed to this person and the comparison right you compare yourself to other people uh, as far as well this person slept with like 30 persons in let me pull up from this car yeah um you know it could be like this person slept with like you know nine guys in two months and you feel like you're better because well i'm only sleeping with one person i mean, and we're in a relationship well no it's the same thing right it doesn't matter someone's you know uh, shooting up drugs more than you you know someone shooting up drugs nine times in a week but you just shoot it up once it still doesn't matter you're still a drug addict you know so that was it but guys let me tell you when the Lord came in my life and I surrendered to him I was able to overcome all those things I mean he took those things from me it was a struggle at first Certain things, it was just like, boom, immediately was gone. And other things, guys, when I, when I committed to say, I'm going to follow God, I'm going to fast, I'm going to pray. And, you know, it was like, it wasn't any big fancy fast because I couldn't do long fast at first. So I committed and I just did, you know, maybe 30 minutes. And I will tell God what I want. Lord, I want to stop sinning. I don't want to fornicate. I don't want to keep doing this. I don't want to keep, you know, whatever my issues were. I want to change. I want you. Help me. And I did that. Maybe it was once a week, every Monday or something like that. And then eventually I found I was able to do an hour. But I was consistent. And I asked God. And I did the things that I could do. All right? If I want to stop doing certain things, then maybe I need to block certain people. Maybe I I can't go to these places that I used to. And if I fell and went to hang out or whatever, I'll ask God to help me. I'd be like, Lord, forgive me. And it was just... But I, was, I wanted to stop. So let me tell you, when you commit to God and you pray and you're asking Him and you're talking to Him and you... You put this flesh on the subjection, you're going to stop. You're going to change. And when God is in your life, you're not going to be sinning. Sin cannot remain. It won't. Because it can't remain. Darkness and light cannot be together. 
and the Lord has turned my life around and I use myself as an example so you guys can know it's possible. It does not matter what your what your addiction is or what your sins and things that you may be doing is. God is able. God is capable of stopping you from sinning. You just have to want to. You know, too often there are people who they are just making this excuse for sin and they keep saying Jesus came and died on the cross so you can sin so no matter what you do or no he came and he died once and for all which means they take the Bible take the word and they twist the word of God saying there's no more sacrifice for sins and he has he has um his sacrifice has basically you know gotten rid of sin has abolished sin out of our lives forever and that's not what that scripture is saying you know jesus came not because it's not so we can keep sinning and doing what we want to do but that we can overcome it you have to understand why he was the ultimate sacrifice you have to understand if you're reading the old testament you will see that whenever someone sinned they had to bring a sacrifice and they were bringing sacrifice of you know depending on what it is it could be ox um, ox, cat, uh, ox, bullock, which is basically any sort of livestock, okay, with the exception of horses, you know, they're not doing stuff like that, but it would be like goats, oxen, um, whatever other cattle they say is acceptable. They will be, um, pigeons, I believe, uh, or turtle doves, okay, they will bring those. They'll be bringing an epa of, of, of barley, all these different things, right? So whenever they would sin, the, the person will come in and uh, come into the tabernacle where the, where the priests are. They'll stand at the door, okay, if I'm remembering, okay, I may be messing it up. They, they come to the door and the person will confess their sins and they'll put their hand on the top of the head of let's say they have a a, a a ram or a goat okay and the person will say let's say they their thing was uh they committed some sin i don't know they can they put their hand on top of the head of that animal and will confess their sins okay what they did the priest will be there also okay and what that person will do, let's say, you know, I lied. I told a lie and I was caught in a lie. And they will be asking for forgiveness for that. And they'll confess those sins while touching the head of that ram. Okay, the goat. And then what that person will do once they have, that will be considered like transferring their sins, right, to before God and onto this animal. Then that person would now cut the animal slay the animal at the doorway the priest will then come and the priest will collect the blood of the animal as it's spilled in these bowls then what the priest will do now the person have said what they've said because they can't go any further than that doorway of the tabernacle to confess their sins they can fit they the priest will then take the spilled blood take the animal quarter the animal put it on an altar before god also take the blood sprinkle the blood around the altar put some of the blood on the on different parts of the altar and all of that then burn it before god on behalf of the person that has sinned then what they'll do is they'll take parts of the animal i guess the ashes or whatever is left put it outside the camp this was a process of sacrifices for sin and imagine the person do this again they have to go find another animal they have to make sure that animal has no spots no blemish so they have to check all of that make sure there's no spots and blemishes go through that bring it again say that they're sorry again transfer their sins to the animal slay the animal spill the blood the priests catch it in the bowl do quarter it up again put it in certain areas on the altar then burn it and put the blood sprinkle the blood around the altar all these different things and someone else sins oh get a turtle dove now they're gonna get the turtle dove the the, the person can fits their sins they have to 
<clears throat> excuse me, they're going to now take the ring the neck of the turtle dove, then they're going to cut the turtle doves in different sections, all this. Come on. So you see what was going on, right? Messy job, constant animals just dying on a regular basis. And it was not working. People were still doing what they need to do. So Jesus, so God sent his son Jesus as the ultimate sacrifice. He was going to die once because there was no more. There's not going to be any more every, <clears throat> excuse me, every month or every so often, every year, every quarter, every second, a sacrifice is being made. He was not going to be sacrificed over and over again. He was not going to come and keep being sacrificed. Oh, you sinned today. Oh, let me go on the cross today. Uh, you you did this. Okay, let me go get crucified again. Oh, you did this. Okay, let me go get my side pierced through today. He died once. Okay, that means he there was no need for a perpetual sacrifice. He was going to die one time. And he was going to die for all. Because remember, when they were doing their sacrifices, that those those the those um, sacrifices for sins, that was only for the children of Israel. That was them. There was nobody else. That was specifically laid in the laws of Moses, and that was a, those were the protocols that they followed the guidelines for sin. So now Jesus comes and not only is he going to die one time, but he is going to die for all people, whether you were a Jew or you a Gentile, whether you are a, a Hebrew or whether you are a Chinese person, whether you are an African person, whether you are a white European, whether you are Asian, he died for everybody. And why did he do that? He died. So we don't have to keep, we are not going to, he died. When he died on the cross, guys, it was so we can overcome sin. Okay. He basically <laughs> weakened the power of sin over us. And even though it may seem as if Oh, we can't. The reason why is, it's not that you, you can't. You want to do that. Sin is not going to convince some of you guys to go in the toilet and take out a number two and put it in your mouth. Sin can never put that in your heart to go do that. Oh, go take that out of the toilet and eat it. You have self-control with that. Because that's not what you want. But depending on whatever it is you want and you desire, that's when it's going to be a struggle. Not because it's so much more powerful than you, but it's what you like to do. It's what you want to do. If you're a person, you like to fight people. It's not that you can't curb your anger. You like to fight. You like the feeling of rage and carrying out your actions. If you're a person, you struggle with your flesh and you struggle with, with uh fornication adultery whatever you know you're not gonna do that with just anybody it's ironic how people will say that they can't overcome sins and they can't stop but they're very specific in what they're doing you're not sleeping with an old grandmama because that's not your forte while some of you it may be you're not sleeping with any person you're looking for a certain build a certain type Unless you get to the point that you are so whatever, you sleep with anybody because there are people like that. But they didn't just get that way. The reason why sin is a struggle for some people is because it's what they want to do. So they don't want to let go of that. They don't want to let it go. And so they choose to now make it appear that it's okay to do it because they want to be able to sin comfortably and not feel any guilt sin really changes your mind that's the danger of it you know people when they take drugs and they take crack they change they don't know what they're gonna do 
And that's the same thing. You know, people can look and look at a, a drug addict, someone who's strung out on drugs. Oh, this is so sad. You see them looking like a certain way. But you know what, guys? That's a different sin, but it's the same outcome. People who are talking about you can you can still serve God and you, you're going to go to heaven no matter how you sin. No, they strung out on that crack called sin. And what it does, when you see someone that's strung out on drugs and crack, they're walking around thinking they look normal, but they don't. They'll do anything. They'll steal. They'll do anything. They'll lie because they want to keep, they want to get that next hit. And that's what people who believe that they can sin and still go to heaven, that's what they do. They cracked out. You look at a straight crack addict on sin. Crack, not crack the drug, but they are cracked out on that OSAS. They taking that OSAS. And that OSAS is going to tell you that, oh, you can do anything and still make it in. Because sin changes and it darkens your mind. That's the danger of it. And it begins to feed you a different narrative. And so you see these individuals living their life, doing whatever they want to do, doing sinful things, right? And then telling you they still going to make it in. It's the same thing as when you see someone who's on crack cocaine trying to convince you that they're not high and everything is normal. They think they're fine walking around, but we who are not drug addicts, you can look at them and see they're not okay. And they'll tell you anything. They'll say anything. They'll try to act normal, but you can see that they've been cranked. And guys, that's what it is with sin. Jesus did not come to die for sin to make sin okay. Sin carries certain characteristics that's that is that's described in Galatians chapter 5 you start at 16 and he tells you the characteristics of the flesh it was manifest the ways of the of the flesh are manifest the works of the flesh are manifest which means it's going to come out you're going to see it no matter how a person tries to act like oh they're not or they're a certain way you're going to see it it's going to come out in their actions their words what they do okay and it tells you who who does these things cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven and the and the bible tells you straight up sin was an issue sin is always an issue God hates sin. That's why there was so much sacrifice of animals in the days. So Jesus came to die one time and for all. That means sin does not have the power over us as we may make it seem. It doesn't have power. It's just that you want it. If you want to eat that piece of cake, that cake's not going to make you. It's there. But it's up to you if you're going to go in the store. It's there if you're going to go to the storefront and look at it and then go in and then, oh, I just want to smell the, you know, I just want to smell the bakery. And then, oh, I just want to, you know, take a, just put it on my plate and look at it. And then, oh, all I'm going to do is sniff it. Oh, all I'm going to do is just take one bite. Then next thing you know, you ate that whole slice and then you're asking to get the whole cake to take it home. That's how sin works. It has no power over you unless you desire it and you want it. And God can overcome sin. The Lord that's created this earth, the Lord that created the heavens and the earth, the Lord, at the name of Jesus, every demons have to flee. At the name of Jesus, demons fall down and bow down. You're going to tell me that God can't stop you from doing what you're doing. He can't help you. The thing with him that's important, he's not going to make you. You're not a robot. He gave you the power of choice. He gave us all the power of choice because we can overcome. He wants us to exercise that power. He wants us to exercise that restraint. It's like if you have a child and they don't feel like walking, you're like, okay, I'll just push you around in a in a in a stroller all your life till your feet start dragging. Oh, okay, you don't the stroller's too small. Let's put you in a wheelchair. Yeah, you can walk, but I'm just gonna push you around. You don't feel like walking, let me carry you over here. You don't you would not do that with your child. They'll become lazy, their muscles will begin to shrink, they will get weak. And in case of anything, they can't run. They can't run to protect themselves. They can't do regular things. And that's why Jesus, that's, that's why God 
It's not going to just snap, poof, take the sin, you're gone. No, he wants you and I to understand that we can overcome it by doing certain things. I've given you the power. I've already died on the cross. I've already paved the way. You have the authority to overcome this thing because we're spiritual beings. And at the end of it all, we're going to be in eternity with the Lord. You know, he's made us just a little lower than the angels. So we're spiritual beings. He's going to, we can't be weak. We can't, well, we can't overcome. We can't do anything. What are we going to do in heaven? You've been there weak and jelly back, not knowing what to do. Just skinny, just super skinny spiritually. You understand what I'm saying? So I just want you to understand right now that sin is not okay with God. It makes no sense. Osas's whole philosophy makes zero sense. Jesus did not come to die for sins, became the ultimate sacrifice for sin. So we can now sin thanks to him. The Bible says God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we walk in sin and claim to be claim to know him, we lie and the truth is not in us. God is not going to tolerate any unclean, any darkness to enter into heaven. And there's nothing in the Bible that says the exemption is going to be people who get to know me. The exemption, only those who belong to the devil are going to go to hell. But those who belong to me and are sinning, they're still going to enter in. God hates sin. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice because the, the sacrifices of old, how they were doing it, was perpetual and it was going on and it was not changing anything. Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice where he was going to die one time versus annually versus monthly versus daily as it was back in the days where people had to keep bringing stuff for sin and he died for all people. It was no longer just sacrifices for the children of Israel only, but for all the world. Because the blood of Jesus is completely different from the blood of lambs and rams. There is power in his sacrifice. And so sin, sin no longer has the power that it once had over us. But you must want to stop just as I wanted to stop. And so I plugged into God. You see, the Bible says in John chapter 15, I am the branch. I am, no, I am the true vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me, if you do it, you know, he who abides in the, in the vine, basically they're saying, and you bear fruit, then the, you know, that's going to be good for us. The, the father is going to prune us and we're going to be able to produce more fruit. But anyone who is in Christ who does not produce fruit, they're going to be cut off. So there's a lot of people who say that they're in Christ, but they want to stay as they are. They're not willing to change. They want to be in the vine and thinking they're going to get a free ride. But if you are not producing fruit, you're not producing the fruit of the spirit, which is going to come through obedience to him, which is going to come from really submitting yourself and saying, God, this is what I'm doing. I want to stop doing it. Stop doing the stuff that you're doing. Pour out the alcohol that you may need to pour out. Cut out these uh, friends and with benefits and, and benefits with friends that you may have going on. Stop being in adulterous relationships. Stop fornicating. Stop beating up your, your wife and your husband. Stop abusing your children. Stop lying. Stop going to work and living this double life. Stop being in people's DMs. Stop masturbating. Stop being violent. Stop being hurtful to people. Stop being a racist. Stop being biased. Stop being extremist. You know, you can be white and an extremist and you can also be black and you're an extremist. Black people that's hate in hate groups, attacking people, black people being on groups on on online, hating people, threatening people, doing all these different things, cyberbullying, stop bullying people, stop lying to your parents, stop doing these things. Guys, all of that. The Lord, you have to be willing to recognize and say, okay, 
I need to stop doing this. You need to make the effort. You may not, you may not succeed at first, but you can do it. If you do that and you're praying and you ask God to show you, he'll show you. You can fast. Things that you can't break, the things that you may say, I want to stop doing it, but you keep doing it anyway, that is a stronghold. And the only way that stronghold is going to be broken is going to be through fasting, praying, seeking God, complete obedience to him. You have to want to. And when you want to, you see sometimes people, oh, I don't people don't want I don't want to sin but you don't want to get in that bathtub in order to get clean you got to get in that shower so people be outside the shower praying oh forgive me but they don't want to get in and get clean okay here's a shower here's a sacrifice it's been done get in take a shower wash off get the soap get that washcloth people there's a lot of people what they do is they want God to they want to say I'm clean without getting clean, without taking the steps to be clean. They want to be declared to be clean, but they don't want to get in the shower. They don't want to use the soap. They don't want to use the washcloth. They don't want to use these things. They just want to be declared clean. And there's a lot of people, they want to be declared to be children of God and they're going to get into heaven. But they don't want to follow instructions. They don't want to follow things. They want to pick and choose what they want to believe in the Bible just so they can keep sinning. Like I said, like that crack at it. They will be telling you they're clean, but you can tell they're not because it's going to manifest in their behavior. And the same thing with those who say they're of God, that it's going to manifest. Now they've been, they're so desperate to sin that they're going to try to say the Bible says I can sin. You are looking at someone who is cracked out on that OSAS. And I'm not trying to insult anybody, but this is serious because if you die right now in your sins, you are not going to heaven. You are not going to heaven. The Bible does not condone sin. People who are believing that they can still go to heaven no matter how much they sin. You are going to be so mistaken. Sin and the ways of it, those things come from Satan, his fallen angels, his demons. That's the behavior. Those are, that's their stuff. How can you do their, how can you play with their things and still go to heaven? Do you, don't, don't you think God has the ability to keep you strong enough so that you can overcome sin, so that you can be a clean vessel for him? It reminds me, you know, you're growing up and you're in the shower and your parents tell you to go bathe and you don't want to bathe. So you go in and you run the water and just stand in there forever. And then you come out and you're like, oh, I shower. And your mom and your dad know you didn't that shower because they can touch your skin. They can smell your hands and skin. There's no soap. They can touch your skin and feel like there's no moisture. Now they got to tear your little behind up and stick you in there now now your whole butt stinging because you got spanked and you're in the shower now when you should have showered in the first place they go in there and the washcloth is just dry the soap bar or whatever is just dry you ain't been in there the rug is dry and that's what a lot of people will try to do with god the lord is more than capable of changing you this is an almighty God you have to want to let go of it when he came and he died once and for all it's because he was not going to keep dying every minute coming back down and say oh you lied let me come yeah let me get on cross he's not going to do that he only needs to do it once and he did it for all people and we can overcome and if you read Colossians chapter 2 you will see that he made a spectacle of sin we now have power over it through his blood, through his name, through the mighty power of God, through his ultimate sacrifice. We can overcome. Even if it's a struggle at times, you being consistent in prayer and in fasting and in seeking God and in closing out those DMs and in cutting off those people and stop going to these places and stop going to Netflix and chilling. You have to make some effort. You have to show God that you are trying. 
And even if you're weak and you come up short, he'll help you because he sees that you're trying. You really don't want to. He will help you even when you want to. You don't want to, but you want to, but you really don't want to. He's going to help you. There's no more sacrifice for sins. And what that means is after Jesus, if you keep sinning and you keep saying, I can't, I can't, there's nobody else that can help you. There is no hope outside of him. So the bottom line is make your choice. Choose who you're going to serve because you are these individuals that believe that they can sin and go to heaven. Anyway, there you're delusional. You are in a reprobate state. Because if you read your Bible page by page, read it in order, you're going to see the truth. God bless.